everybody, welcome back, and we are going to continue with everything we've been learning. We just uh, calculated the route from a certain coordinate to another coordinate, thanks to Mapbox, and in this video, we're gonna go ahead and actually draw the line that should show on the map for our route and navigation. We're gonna go ahead and write that function and then call it when we press our button. So, let's go ahead and do that now, down beneath our calculate route function. We're gonna call func draw route, okay? And uh, we're gonna pass in a route, of course, of type route. And if you remember, the route that we set here, directions route, we set a variable at the top, and we initialized it with the routes that are returned from our directions calculate function. So we're gonna go ahead and be able to pass in that route to this function and actually draw the line on the map. So first we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that our route actually has some coordinates in it. Let's say that there was a weird fluke and we returned a route that had no coordinates. We need to make sure there are, otherwise we will have a crash. So we're gonna use guard and we're gonna just check to make sure that route dot coordinates is greater than zero. Otherwise, we're gonna just gracefully return and not cause a crash in our application. In the instance that there are more than zero, we're gonna go ahead and just create a variable called route coordinates and set that to be equal to route dot coordinates, okay? Make sure you unwrap it because at this point, we know for sure that there are some, so we're gonna go ahead and unwrap it just like that and now is where we create our polyline. And the polyline is actually what's going to get dropped down in its own layer on our map. So let's go ahead and type that, let polyline. And that's gonna be equal to MGL polyline feature, okay? I can get that right here. And as you can see, it's a polyline shape with an optional identifier and attributes. So let's go set those up. Alrighty. Now, um, what we can do is we can pass our polyline here coordinates as well as a count for how many there are. So the coordinates we're gonna pass in is route coordinates, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and actually use an ampersand here at the beginning to set it as an in-out parameter, meaning that the function, when we actually create this, the function is gonna be able to modify this variable, the actual variable, um, and set its value accordingly. Now the count is of type uint, but thankfully our route actually has a parameter called coordinate count of type uint. So we can access that really easily by calling route.coordinate count. Now what we're gonna do is set up a source for our polyline. And the source is basically just a way to tell Mapbox what kind of um, line it should draw. And in this case, it is of type route source. So we're gonna go ahead and basically just set it up so that if our map already has a source, we're gonna replace its shape with this polyline. Otherwise, we're gonna create a brand new source from the beginning, set up the line how we want, and then set the source and style of our map view. So if let source equals map view dot style dot source with identifier, like I said, it was of type route source. So if that already exists on our map somewhere, um, also we need to uh, optionally cast it here as an MGL shape source, like so. If that source already exists, we're gonna go ahead and set its shape by calling source.shape, and we're gonna set it to be equal to the polyline. So if that layer already exists, we're gonna just set the polyline there and that will show on our map. Otherwise, or else, we're gonna go ahead and create a source from scratch. So let source equals MGL shape source with identifier, but we also need to pass in some things so that it knows how to set it up. So we're gonna use the option here with um, features already. So we're gonna pass in an identifier, which is route source. The features is an array, and we can pass in our polyline here because that's the feature we wanna add to this layer and the options we don't really care about at the moment, so we're gonna just set them to be nil. Next up, we're gonna create a line style, and this is going to allow us to actually um, set the thickness and the color and the width and everything that we need to for our line. So create a constant called line style, set it to be equal to MGL line style layer, okay? And if you initialize that, you can see it accepts a, an identifier and a source. So our identifier is route source. 
and our source we just created, right? Source. There you go. Uh, and you know what? This actually, my mistake, should be called route style. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set the line color and the line width. So go ahead and type line style dot line color. And as you can see, it's expecting MGL style value with a, a UI color parameter built in. So we're going to go ahead and do that MGL style value. All righty. And we're going to do the one here with a raw value and we'll just give it a raw UI color. Okay, and we'll use a color literal to make things nice and simple. And here we go. We're going to set the color here. I'm going to go ahead and use matte box blue just so that it's nice and pretty. <laughs> so we'll use matte box blue there. And now we're going to set the line width to be about four because I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, it's nice and easy to see. So go ahead and call line style dot line width. And again, it needs to be of type MGL style value. And its raw value is going to be 4.0, just like that. So we've now set the line style. We've set the line color. So now all I need to do is call map view dot style dot add source and pass in our source. Okay, the map uh, the route source. Next, what I have to do is call map view dot style dot add layer, and I'm going to pass in my line style because that's of type line style layer. And at this point, if we already had a layer, we could either replace it with our existing polyline here, or if we don't have one, we create one from scratch. And that is going to actually allow you to either create one from scratch from the beginning or just replace it in the future. So you don't have to create an entire new instance every single time. So very, very cool. We can now successfully draw our route and uh, we are having some trouble here. Uh, we're using coordinates and not coordinate count, that handy dandy parameter I talked about earlier. So now we're good. And at this point, I can call draw route and I can pass in directions route just like that. However, we are inside of a closure. So we're going to need self and we're going to need self before both of those. So that should be good. We are now ready to actually test to see if this works. And the only thing that I need to do is to basically force unwrap that. We know it has a value though, because at this point we've already set it. So we're good. Now I need to go ahead and call navigate button was pressed and call our calculate function. So let's go ahead and let's do that now by typing calculate route. That's our function. And we're going to go ahead and go from somewhere to somewhere, right? So I'm going to go ahead and throw the user's coordinate from the map view into the from parameter. So map view dot users location dot coordinate. Okay, there we go. And since um, at this point, I know for sure that the user does have a location, I'm going to force unwrap that to ensure it goes uh, goes in. We know we have a location at this point, so it's okay. And next we need another coordinate. So this is where I'm actually going to set a little variable up at the top that I've already created. And it actually has the coordinate of Disneyland. So you can copy and paste this if you'd like. And I'm going to pass it in here. So we're going from our location to the Disneyland coordinate and we have a completion handler. So we get a route back or we get an error back. And what we're going to do is basically in the instance of an error. So if error is not equal to nil, what we're going to do is we're going to basically just print out saying error getting route. OK, and that's going to basically handle um, any errors. There are uh, you know better ways to, to handle errors, but uh, this is about how to use maps. So we'll talk about errors later. Let's go ahead and let's build and run. Let's see how we did. We've created waypoints. We've created options there and we have called the directions calculate function. We have set some bounds here to zoom our camera. Here we go. We're zooming into our user's location. That's cool. Let's go ahead and set our location to freeway drive right at the beginning of this. And if I click navigate, it should generate a route and zoom out. Now, did you notice that the uh, map zoomed back over to where the user was? The user's moving. So what it's doing is it's basically tracking them and it centers the map on their location. So here's what we're going to do when we actually push the button. We're going to actually pause that so that we don't run into that problem. So call map view dot set user tracking mode to none. And we're going to say animated true. Okay. So let's build and run that. And now what should happen 
is when we click the navigate button, it should zoom out to our route and not snap back to where the user is moving. So here we go. We've zoomed in successfully, looking good. And let's click navigate. There we go. And it zooms out. We have some nice padding on the left and right sides for our route. This is really, really cool stuff. So this is great, but we need to have a little annotation drop down here for where we're going. And we're gonna do that in the next video and set it up so that when we tap on it, we can present our turn-by-turn -turn directions provided by Mapbox. I'll see you in the next video.